Have you ever wondered about the fascinating paradox of the Japanese diet? Despite being rich in salty foods, the Japanese people have the longest life expectancy in the world. Welcome back this week. Today we are having a special episode diving deep into this intriguing phenomenon to uncover the secrets behind the Japanese longevity paradox. Today's Japanese people, on average, live 8.1 years longer than people in the U.S., but this has not always been the case. But in fact, in 1960, Americans, on average, lived longer than Japanese, but in only six years, they managed to reverse the trend. Now, the life expectancy gap between the two countries' people is only growing larger by the day. Well, let's rewind the clock. In the pre-World War II era, Japan faced numerous challenges: infectious diseases, poor nutrition, and limited access to healthcare were among the hurdles that negatively impacted the population's overall health and longevity. However, Japan's rapid economic rebound following World War II sped up the investment in public health measures and nutritional changes, allowing advancements in healthcare, education. And awareness about health and hygiene. These factors collectively paved the way for a healthier, longer-living Japan. While these efforts led to slight improvements in life expectancy during the 1960s, Japan still lagged behind the peer countries in terms of overall life spans. A significant contributing factor was the high prevalence of cerebral vascular disease, heart disease. And stomach cancer. But notably, in 1960, Japan had the highest stroke rate among developed nations. But these diseases are all tied to high salt intake. Things started to really take a turn when the Japanese began their campaign to reduce salt intake. In the 1950s, the average salt intake ranged from 17 to 27 grams per day, depending on the region. But by early 2010, it had reduced to about 10 grams daily. Although it was still double the WHO recommendation, the salt reduction campaign saw significant results when the nation's cerebrovascular disease death numbers dropped by about tenfold in 50 years. The Japanese still consume a lot of salt because the traditional Japanese diet is known for its high salt content. Featuring staples like soy sauce, miso, and pickled vegetables, so how do they manage to live so long while consuming seemingly unhealthy elements? Let's find out with Japan's oldest fitness instructor, 93-year-old Takishima Mika's diet. Mika's breakfast is a well-balanced meal rich in protein and fermented food. Most notably, he ate natto and yogurt every day. The natto is fermented boiled soybean. It carries a distinct smell and taste that many younger Japanese generations dislike. However, natto is rich in vitamin K2, specifically MK7, which is essential in bone health, reducing fracture risk, and maintaining bone density. Another unique protein, natto kinase. Finding natto has been shown to dissolve blood clots in in vitro studies. It potentially has a beneficial effect in preventing cardiovascular disease. Much research has been done on yogurt and its effect in supporting healthy gut bacteria. A healthy gut is a significant contributor to a robust immune system. Another noticeable breakfast item is nukazuke. Japanese fermented pickles in rice bran. Mukatsuke contains 100 million cultures per gram, similar to yogurt. Besides, fermented rice bran bread contains nutrients such as vitamin B1, potassium, and vitamin E. It is confirmed that the vitamin B complex in vegetables increases by tenfold with rice bran pickling. Namika's dinner consists of a variety of Animal and plant proteins, including chicken, salmon, tofu, and edamame, but it's also balanced with green leafy vegetables and 
an appropriate amount of carbohydrates from white rice. Another notable item in her dinner is kimchi, a Korean fermented cabbage, plus more of her favorite natto. Now we can see her diet is not all traditional Japanese, but also with a hint of westernized style, such as salad and yogurt. She also consumed a variety of fermented foods to support her gut health. Her meals are balanced with a small amount of carbohydrates, adequate proteins, fat, and fibers. Overall, her meal provides an essential nutrient with very little added sugar and ultra-processed food. A study has identified that among the G7 countries, people in Japan consumed the least amount of beef, pork, milk, starchy roots, sugar, and sweeteners, and their fish consumption was the highest at about twice of the US, and sugar and sweetener consumption was about 2.5 times less than the US. When my family had a short trip to Tokyo, Japan last June, my son, who was raised and born in the US, loved almost everything he saw and ate in Japan, except the walking part. Now, unlike here in the US, where most of us who do not live in the cities would just drive everywhere, in Japan, walking is an essential part of daily life. 10,000 steps a day is almost like the minimum. I've shared research about how even 4,000 steps a day can have beneficial effects on the mind and body. Most, if not all, Japanese are unconsciously gaining the benefit, which a lot of us in the US can hardly achieve. But yes, Japanese are fond of salty food. But the paradox of their longevity is a result of a holistic approach to health, balanced nutrition, portion control, an active lifestyle, and effective public health measures collectively contribute to the longevity observed in Japan. At last, I do want to emphasize that the lifestyle in Japan is not perfect. Many Japanese have significant mental stress from work, and that is an area that requires special attention. Coming back to the US, improving life expectancy in the United States is no small task considering the many factors that contribute to our decreasing lifespans. But Japan makes an example that dietary factors play a significant role in overall health. Now it will take decades of dedication to change the course of health in this country, and I hope that this channel can at least provide some evidence-based guidance for you to start the health journey. Remember, it's not about taking medicine. It's about the choices you make every day. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Eat healthily and stay healthy. Take good care. Bye.